welcome to Food Art. My name is John Gargone and today we're going to be doing some speed knife handling techniques. I'm going to show you how to do some speed slicing in this video, but first I want to talk to you a little bit about what type of knife to use and its uses. This is the number one knife that all chefs use in the kitchens. Um, it's for slicing and dicing and chopping and all the other specialty cuts that we usually do. And this is called a French knife. It's called a French knife because it's got a wide blade. So when you hold it by the handle and work on a cutting board, you don't have to worry about smashing your fingers on a cutting board. This is a 10 inch French knife and it's a pretty good size for the average person, 10 to 12, maybe 14 inches. As you see here, I have a 16 inch French knife. This is for a big guy. Or if you're doing some heavy duty chopping, works out really, really well. You wanna look for high carbon steel High carbon steel will hold an edge for a very, very long time. It's also a stainless steel, so it'll always be very clean. Um, it'll never rust and, of course, never have any food stains on it. Uh, this is just an average knife. It's not very expensive, but it is very, very important that your knives are razor, razor sharp. It's actually safer to work with a razor sharp knife than it is a dull knife. A dull knife can slip off a product and easily cut your fingers, whereas a razor sharp knife, it's going to cut exactly where you put it. You don't have to worry about it sliding off a product. And also, it'll slide through that product like butter when it's razor sharp, so you can use it effortlessly. There's mechanics that you use to learn how to work with a knife, but you know, just like riding a bicycle, your brain remembers over time, and then sooner or later, you won't even have to think about it. It'll be that easy to cut. So to get a razor sharp knife, I prefer an old fashioned method. I have here a regular water stone, or it could be an oil stone, really doesn't matter. They're usually two sided, so you have a coarse grain on top and then a fine smooth one on the bottom made for honing. And the way you use the stone is just lay your knife flat against it, put three fingers right on top of the blade, lift that blade up just about a quarter inch, not much because you don't want a large V there. What happens if you have a large V on the edge of your knife, as you see in this knife here, compared to this one, this V will split the product before it cuts it, and it's very difficult to push that knife through a product, even if it is razor sharp. And it's not very safe. So working with a razor sharp knife is absolutely the best. Again, the way you sharpen it, is just lay it against the stone, bring it up about a quarter inch or a half inch, put your three fingers on top of it and just push it back and forth across the stone. Flip it over and do the other way. Now the professionals, they'll teach you to sharpen a stone with a certain action, which would be this here. Start from the tip, put your three fingers on top of the tip of the blade, pull it up, and then pull it back as you flip it over. Flip it over again, pull it up, flip it over, bring it back, and then continue until you have the edge that you need. But you know, I, I really find it much easier just to lay that blade against it, bring it up, and go back and forth with it. You can also use an electric sharpener. When you use an electric sharpener, as you see, it has two wheels. One wheel is coarse, the other one wheel is a fine wheel for honing. And again, when you use an electric sharpener, you can see that there's a wide space in your sharpener here that your knives can wiggle in. That's not good. You want to make sure that when you sharpen it, that you lay your knife right against the edge of the sharpener and just pull it back gently and just apply a very little amount of pressure down on the stone. You don't need much at all. Let the machine do the work for you and then continue on the other side. Now, although it does have a honing wheel and although that the stone does have a honing side to it, it's still not going to get rid of all the burrs of metal that are on the edge of your knife. And that's where a professional steel comes in. You can see this is a pretty big steel. It's a very old fashioned one. I've had it for many, many years. I think over 25 years. But you can purchase a uh, diamond steel, you know, a shorter one. I sharpen all size knives from this. You don't need it quite that big, but it works just fine. It not only takes off the burrs of your knife, but it'll actually resharpen it over time. From every time it gets dull, just use that steel again. You don't need to go back to the stone if you sharpen it the way that I suggested. And if you purchase a knife that doesn't have a big V along the edge of the knife like I showed you on the other one. And then to use this steel, just lay the back end of the knife against the steel and then bring it down. And as you see right here above my thumb, you have a plate on the steel and it protects your fingers from the knife hitting it. So don't even think about, don't worry about it, don't think about it. Concentrate on the angle that you hold your knife on the steel. 
I'm laying it flat here. I lift it up maybe a quarter inch, the same angle as what we use to sharpen on a stone, and then slowly bring it down, and then do the other side. And then over time, you can get faster and faster and faster. And believe me, this steel will resharpen that knife, and you should have a nice sharp knife if you sharpen the way I suggested over a period of years in home use. Today we're going to slice a cucumber. But first I want to show you how to hold a knife and the mechanics involved in it. And I'm just going to go over it quickly because if you want to see this in detail you're going to have to see my professional knife handling video. So anytime you use a French knife you want to put your index finger and your thumb around the blade. Wrap three fingers around it. Yeah, that's the index and thumb around the blade and wrap three fingers around it. You want to concentrate on the angle that you're holding the knife. You don't want to hold the knife in angled in because it's going to cut your finger. You don't want to hold it out too far because then you're cutting sideways on your product. What you do want to do is just have a little bit of an angle away from you. And as you can see, there's no way that I can cut my finger like that. If I angled it in, forget about it, I'm going to chop my finger right off. But if you angle it out, there's no way that you can cut your finger. The other hand is just as important as the one holding the knife because this hand is the one that's going to be guiding the thickness of the slices. And every time that I make a slice in anything that I'm doing, I'm going to actually hit my finger with that blade. The action for that is, as you can see, I put my finger and thumb on each end of the cucumber. I'm going to curl that finger back with the knuckle exposed fingertip in. Then I'm going to, every time I take a slice, I'm going to actually hit that knuckle, as you see. Now, like I said, over time, with a little bit of practice, and you can actually practice this with a banana and a knife. You hold the butter knife the exact same way I'm holding a French knife. Get yourself a banana. Slice the banana the same way I'm showing you with this cucumber. Do that maybe 20 or 30 times. Then pick up a French knife and do the same thing. And you'll be, be amazed how much you've already learned. Now, we're going to slice this cucumber. But just to prove that it is an automatic response, that it is motor skills and not my eyes doing the work, I'm going to put a blindfold on to slice this cucumber. I just happen to have one right here. And I promise you I'm not going to be able to see a thing. Find my knife. There's a cucumber. Here's my knife. And as you can see, I'm going to curl that finger back. I got my thumb on the other end of the cucumber. It's going to pull it back. I'm going to angle that blade away from my finger, and I'm going to start slicing. I hope I don't cut myself, but I'm going as quick as I can. We shall see. Well, well I don't know if you had a chance to count all them slices, but uh, they looked pretty good. You can see they're all pretty even. Well, well, I hope you enjoyed this speed slicing video. If you'd like to see some more details on how to handle French knives and other knives, you're going to have to check out my professional knife handling videos, which tells you in detail all the specialty cuts that you could be doing and how to achieve them. Well, thank you very much. Happy garnishing!